Hey guys, it is me, your girl, Ayla, and I have got um, a really cool package in the process of wanting to get into survival and bushcraft and being better adept at being totally independent in nature. I knew that I needed to do research into finding the right knife. And this is the package that I am gonna sit here. This is the package that's gonna make me destroy my phone trying to film an unboxing of it. <sighs> my goodness, anyways. Also, check out this beautiful piece of wood. I won it. I won it. It's a major award. But it's a major award. I won it. Damn hell, you say you won it? Yeah. Yeah, have mind power, sweet mind power. Anyways, I'm going to sit here and open this up and see I'm trying not to um trying not to do dox myself. I'm getting old. I don't know what they call it. There's already bugs in the box. This is a Hele, Hele Egen uh, 12C27 Sandvik knife. Anyways, let's, let's look into this. Already, that looks beautiful. Let's see here. Got this little hello booklet. All right. So I've got all the contents here of the tube. I've got an awesome little branded hello wipe. So that way, like when I'm out in the bush, I have something to immediately clean my knife with to help protect it from corrosion. Even though it's stainless steel, you should make those choices, uh, practice those self-care. And I mean, in time, that is ultimately what's going to teach me to take care of a carbon when the time comes. Now, this is really cool. This is a, a genuine leather sheath. And honestly, it looks really really cool. I'm really thrilled with this. It feels good. It feels right. I wonder if I chew on it, if it has that same great flavor that you get when you're chewing on like a baseball mitt. Um, I'm so glad I'm so glad I went with this one. So, first of all, look at that beautiful mirror finish. This is, this is really good. Um, something I was ner nervous about. So I will, like full disclosure, I ended up buying this knife through um, Mountain Equipment Co-op. Um, there was discrepancies between what Hele details as the length of the um, handle versus what Mech was saying the length of the handle was. So I was really nervous about what I was going to be running into. I was nervous that my hand was too wide for the grip. It says 110 centimeters. I will double check that for this video. So just to uh, clear up the discrepancy on this blade here, or the handle length, you could probably do the whole thing to be fair. So the handle length for me is coming up about 115 
centimeters. Maybe if we're looking at it from the other end, I don't, I do not know how Mech got 110. Maybe, yeah, it's got to be from here to here is 110. But I would more say it's the 115 that I'm seeing on the other side here. As for the blade, I am seeing 110, almost exactly. 110 millimeters, I should say. Sorry there. And for you folk at home that use inches, I would call the handle four and a half inches exactly. The blade four inches exactly. So obviously that's gonna take us to eight and a half. Eight and a half uh, as a full length for the for the knife here. I'm so in love with this curly birch. Like what a beautiful selection and piece of wood here. I'm I'm absolutely enamored with this. As you can see, I'm uh, definitely not the most experienced with it, but it's cutting the wood like butter. Uh, I just need better uh, practice and control that I'm not uh, cutting the shavings right off every time I uh, go to put the feathers in, so to speak. <laughs> but, uh, you know, that's exactly what I got this knife for is uh, practice and time. And I'm sure my wood selection could probably help with that as well. <laughs> rather than just using some uh, ripped off hunk of random wood. Um, but I guess, uh, you know, practice also would teach me that sometimes you just work with whatever you get. So when I was first looking into camping, bushcraft, and survival knives, I was really drawn to Adventure Sworn, largely because I have a huge affinity for Joe Robinette and Joe Robinette in the past has talked a great deal about Adventure Sworn and his love for them. And looking into them, they look like phenomenal knives. This being said, they're all high carbon steels, which is not something that I'm familiar with. I have never had to care for or um, know what the, like the practice is for caring for a high carbon steel uh, to last long and well. So I didn't necessarily want that as a first knife. So I wanted to choose something that was on the stainless steel. Another option that came up for me was Hella. And Hella I was drawn to because of Les Stroud Survivor Man. And Les Stroud did a collaboration with Hella and developed uh, one of their first full tang knives. And it's called the Tomogamy Knife. It is a beautiful knife. I very much was drawn to it. Now, another big reason that I was looking at Hella over Adventure Sworn is Adventure Sworn is a US company. All of their knives are in about a three to $400 range, maybe even a bit more depending on some of the alterations that you get 
add-on pieces, etc. When you convert this to Canadian, you're looking at about a half a grand to $600 Canadian, which is out of budget for me, especially for a first knife. Stroud's Tomogamy knife is about 300 Canadian, which is a little more affordable. But again, for the first knife, it was a bit out of mark for me. But I could see from everything that I was looking at that Hele was an amazing company that developed quality product. I discerned this because when I was looking into the Tomogamy knife, I saw that there was actually a few discrepancies of people's opinions on how they felt about their like receiving of the Tomogamy knife. And they, it seemed to be largely dependent on the outlet of which they purchased the Tomogamy knife. Now this brings into question whether or not there are potentially manufacturers out there who are um, not hella, so like inauthentic replications, just trying to cash out on the Survivor Man name. Um, and it seems that this is the case. I mean, there's also a lot of people out there who seem to be crazy knife enthusiasts who were really bugged out about some of the very smallest details about like maybe a, some grind lines in the line, uh, in the blade, uh, maybe some tiny nips and chips in the wood. I mean, we're talking about a company that I think, if re my research is correct, that there's about 20 workers or so in a small manufacturing plant out in Norway that make all these knives. They're all made by hand. There is no machining or automation or fast market reproduction of these knives. So you're not gonna get the same thing twice. You're not gonna get 100% perfection. I mean, that's what comes in the trade-off of handcrafted. Handcrafted means care and quality, but it also means that there are room for tiny errors cosmetic errors um, and to me that is something that I really value I like the discernment that someone actually was looking at this and knew what they were putting out before they shipped it off and it tells me that it's quality because of the few people that were complaining about the Tomogamy knife online there was an overwhelming support saying that is not what Hella stands behind reach out to Hella um, they're, they stand behind their product and a lot of people are saying that they've had Hella knives and products in their family for generations. If not the same product, then they're continuously going for more because they, pro like, they prove themselves to that family or bloodline or whatever uh, over the years that they stand behind their quality. So this was something that was very alluring to me. Now, Hella does offer stainless steels as well as high carbon steel, although their high carbon steel is what's called triple laminate. Now I'm going to get into some of the, the science behind the steels used in knife making. Before I go on, I want to say that this is everything that I have picked up from research. Um, so I might be completely off center with what is what is fact uh, i might not be the most accurate if you seem to be catching me in a fallacy please let me know uh, it will help me with my growth and learning and um yeah I, I could totally be talking out my ass on some of these but if my research proves correct uh this is my understanding there are two common steels used in knife making. We have stainless steels and we have high carbon steels. Now high carbon steels have long been the best way to go. With high carbon steels, they will tend to be a little more on the brittle side. So rather than your knife breaking completely, um, it might chip a bit, chip away a little bit. They are very prone to corrosion so if you're cutting up high acidic foods, onions, uh, lemons, etc., 
you're going to start developing what's called a patina. Now patina can be a bit healthy and sometimes protect the blade, but ultimately it is the beginning stages of corrosion. As we know with cars and rust, um, when corrosion continues, you will start to get some really, um, some real damages to steel that can long-term impact its ability and quality. So you'll get intense divots or holes if you really let it go. Obviously that's not something that we want, but a beautiful trade-off to high carbon steel is it retains its sharp incredibly well and it will reattain its sharp if you need to um, resharpen it. Then we have stainless steels. Stainless steels are much more corrosion um, resistant. Uh, it doesn't mean that they're completely resistant, but th they do a much better job. If you're doing something you shouldn't with your knife, something high impact, maybe something like batoning and you're just not doing it right, or you're going a little above and beyond the limit of the knife, you will probably actually just break the blade rather than chip it. Um, and another trade-off here that we have is stainless steel doesn't hold its sharpness as well as high carbon does. And it can be more difficult, depending on the type of stainless steel, to reattain the sharpness when you're coming up to doing that. Now, something that Hele has done that is absolutely awesome with its regular knife steels is that they use what they call triple laminate steel. If we look down the back of a blade like this, I'm gonna, like, we're gonna use this imagery in mind. We've got one outside, one outside, and this is the center where the, um, where the, sh like it will be sharpened because we're talking about a Scandi grind blade here. On both outsides, they use a stainless steel. And then in the middle, Hele uses a high carbon steel. So you'll have the high carbon where you need it to protect or, or to hold its sharpness, but you'll have on the outsides, a beautiful stainless steel that will hold that mirror finish, help be corrosion resistant and protect that inner lining of uh, high carbon. I think that this is absolutely ingenious and super remarkable, um, just ingenuity. And uh, I look forward to having another Hella knife in the future where I can maybe explore that. But in terms of just trying to budget correctly, going for a first knife, something that I know I will love and trust in years to come. When I made my selection of knife, I went with the Egan um, stainless steel version, which in this case is a 12C27, which I believe is produced through Sandvik. Um, so it's nice to know that I will have something that will be more familiar product to me. Uh, obviously, I haven't used this exact steel or knife before, but I have used camping knives with stainless steel, so I know the care for them a little better than I do a high carbon. So kind of coming back around and trying to summarize this, I was first looking at Adventure Sworn, high carbon, high cost. Then I was looking at the Les Stroud's Tamagami knife through Hella, beautiful product, still a little out of budget for me. And with the concerns about quality discrepancy, again, seemingly dependent on the outlet uh, through which it's purchased, it just kind of told me to maybe steer away from that, but I realized then that I found the right company. Uh, so looking within Hella, I was looking at other options and that is where I found this option, which is the Egan. Now, I was still caught between a few different models. Um, here, I, as I said, I went with the Egan. Uh, another model very similar was the Fjolneven. Now, Fjolneven has a bit longer handle and a bit longer blade. I'm wanting to do a fair bit with this knife when I'm out in the bush. 
I'm hoping to learn feather sticking. I've done plenty of campfires over the years, but I've never done feather sticking before. And I think as I get into survival or solo tripping that uh, feather, like feather sticking will be a remarkable way um, to help my fire building skills. Uh, so I'm hoping to learn that as well as other things that I am familiar using a knife for, which uh, might be uh, harvesting or um, processing smaller bits of wood. Um, cooking uh, around the campfire and uh, cutting rope and whatnot when I'm trying to batten down the hatches. So uh, I think that this will be able to do all of that perfectly well as well as give me opportunities to grow and try new things. Um, I was hoping for something that was a full tang. Full tang usually means that you would be able to see the entire blade steel through the the hilt but um i didn't think that that was necessary right off the bat maybe when i get into some hardcore batoning down the road that will be something that i'll look at uh, but what is nice about this is that it does still have a rat tail tang which means that uh, the blade steel will come in and have a thin rat tail so to speak through the hilt which is then uh, shown and visualized here through the uh, divot at the end. And uh, this will allow that if I need to, for whatever reason, hammer the knife into wood, that it will provide a little more support than necessarily just hammering straight onto the handle and risking chipping the handle altogether. Uh, obviously, I think that is still a risk, um, but yeah, with the rat tail tang, hopefully it helps. It also just means that if I'm, uh, let's say, feather knifing and trying to wedge off um, uh, shavings, that it's going to hold the blade in the handle and not just pull it right out. So, well, thank you guys for taking a look at this new beautiful knife with me. Uh, and all the reasons around why I got it. Again, if you're hearing anything that isn't adding up to the way that you understand knife, knife steels, uh, or your researchers found anything else, you think I'm talking out my ass, please let me know in the comments. Just correct me. Uh, I'm, I'm learning in some regard here, and uh, I would greatly appreciate any corrections. It will help me on my journey to develop better outdoor and survival skills as I take the steps from uh, tent camping with the family all my life to um, more solitary uh, portaging, bushcraft, survival type um, outing adventures. So uh, thank you for following along with me and I hope that this has been a worthwhile review for you and uh, until next time.